Hello everyone. Welcome to DM Neurology Made Easy. I am Dr. Ahmed Subair. So today my plan is to discuss regarding MRI basics. So let's make uh, this gray area for you simplify. So as we know from time immemorial MRI has been can be taught in two ways that is classical way and the quantum physics way. So as we know we are no Einstein, Schrodinger or Max Planck to study all of the quantum physics and then understand the MRI. We are basically physicians, neurologists and pediatricians trying to get the grasp of the uh, this uh, imaging modality. The basic is that we follow a thing called basic uh, principle called nuclear magnetic resonance. So th this needs an MR active nuclei and the MR active nuclei is actually the hydrogen nuclei. And we know the hydrogen nuclei is actually in plenty in our body. That 70 percentage of our body is actually water and water contains hydrogen nuclei. This hydrogen nuclei because it is, has got a charge, it has got a vector. And, and this vector or the charged hydrogen nuclei because it is moving helter skelter, it is, doesn't give an electrical charge or current within our body. In absence of a magnetic field but in an MRI what happens is that when an electrical when a magnetic field is given to that protons that is a whole bunch of protons what happens is it's either aligns in a parallel field to the magnetic field or anti parallel to the magnetic field and in such a magnetic field aligned proton if we give a push to that proton that proton will either flip to the transverse position and then come back or so that is just like pushing a standing person, it, he will fall. And once the push is removed, he will come back to the original position. So push is given, that is the radio frequency pulse. And then he comes back once the radio, radio frequency pulse uh, push is removed. So this, the proton, the content is different in different tissues. Same as the water content is different in different tissues. And in the same tissue even, it will be variable at the various areas. So that is the time taken for this fallen proton to come, fallen number of protons to come back to the original position or the longitudinal low energy position will be variable for various number of tissue, variable for different tissues and hence the T1 relaxation will be different for different tissues and hence the T1 will be different for different tissues. And similarly, the lying down tissues or lying down protons which loses energy to get back to the longitudinal position also varies and this is called the T2 decay. So this both will determine the T1 and the T2 and further if you see these two values are important that is repetition time and time to echo because the amount of time between two successive pulse sequence applied to the same slice is called repetition time and the time between the pulse and the recovery or receipt of the echo signal so that we interpret that signal is actually time to echo. If we shorten it or lengthen it and uh, we alter it either ways or we have this combination, we get the different types of sequences. In T1, we have both TR and TE shortened and T2, we have both lengthened. And if we alter it, we get the various sequences. So this is the one when we give a pulse at 90 degree and uh, the, so lying down, flipped over, 180 degree we gave another pulse then it is collected as echo so this is actually time to this is time to echo and uh, this to another pulse which is coming in the next sequence will be time to uh, repetition time so the tr and te so learn that so this is same thing tr and so this is tr and this is te so if you alter it we get sh short pr and short tr and short te we will get the t1 long TR and long T we get the T2. If they alter it, we get the signals. So th with this, now we have, we have become, become quantum uh, physicist. Uh, now we will get into the image proper. So what is T1 image? First, we know that for time immemorial, we have been dealing with CT. So how will you differentiate basically a CT from an MRI? Or that would be the first question. Both looks almost the same. But we should understand that CT, the bone would be very conspicuous and it will be brighter. And in MRI, bone would be absent. But then, if bone is absent, what is seen so bright in the calvarium or in, in as a uh, box outside? This is actually bone is actually hypo intense in a CT in an MRI, whatever the sequence may be. But what you see as a bright tissue is actually the fat, in case, especially in the case of a T1 image. 
especially T1 image, we get a fat hyperintensity in case of a T1 image. T1 image, uh, we should understand that technical point of view, TE and TR are short and you always look at the fat, water and the fluid basically. So fat is bright, water is dark in case of a T1 image. You can see water is dark and fat is bright. And the basic thing is like what does the constituent say, what constitutes our brain? There's, you know that the gray, gray matter is gray and white matter is white and gray matter is outside the white matter. You have the outer gray matter and the inner white matter. So in the T1 image, gray matter is gray and white matter is white as such. And uh, you can see here, gray matter is gray and white matter is white. So white matter is white because as we had said previously, fat is bright and the white matter is basically made of myelin and it is made up of fat. And hence that is the reason why white matter is white in case of T1 weighted images. And most pathologies if we see in T1 emitted images it will be hypo intense and what common pathologies we find in neurology and medicine or pediatrics would be hypo intense pathologies. But so it's easy to see, uh, easy to localize or uh, zero in if we find uh, some T1 weighted hyper intensities. So example in case of uh, subacute blood, fat, cholesterol, melanoma, melanin, uh, slow flowing blood, mineralization as in case of manganese, copper, calcification, etc. We have T1 hyperintensities. A code for it I had made is actually subway cholesterol free food may slow my calorie. As a subway is subacute blood, cholesterol, fat, food, uh, this melanin, uh, slow flowing blood, mineralized, minerals like manganese, copper, iron, etc and calories is calcification etc will show T1 hyperintensities and the same T1 is used for contrast and also for fat suppressed images. Then comes the T2 just the opposite TR is long T is long and you know except for fat fat is less, less bright but it is still bright and water is water was suppressed or dark in uh, T1 now it has become bright I remember as world war 2 that is water white in 2. I remember easily like that and by the time you have finished this lecture you would have understood T2 is white and you should understand one more thing apart from fat and water flow is dark so if a flowing blood is going through in the any vessels and all you can see that it will be darker that is why here you know you know that this is a sinus so that is darker something is dark here just because of the reason that there is blood flowing so that is also dark and you know here actually uh, there is gray matter is hyper dense so it's more whiter just the opposite and white matter is darker so it is darker just the opposite so fat uh, it's actually more it is opposite of what you get in uh, t2 t1 weighted images and t1 weighted uh, more darker would be air calcium uh, cortical bone and rapidly flowing blood will be very dark that is why in case of uh, if you have a nematocele air within the brain uh, Mount Fuji sign you say Mount Fuji sign etc then uh, we have uh, this thing and uh, hyper density would be more as you see water is white in uh, T2 image CSF will be more white and uh, this is more easier table for you to understand CSF uh, and uh, white matter cortex etc will be easy to so how will you so you can easily now understand how to differentiate T1 and T2 weighted image so first see the CSF dark it is white then uh, see for then go for the gray matter here is gray more gray here gray matter is gray white matter is white is here more white uh, white matter is more darker you can see for the flow whites so that is makes it very easy and uh, flare you know it is actually the, uh, the CSF is suppressed and if you are confused with flare and uh, T1 just see the gray matter and white matter you will be easily able to understand. So and now what is the importance of flare image? fluid attenuation and inversion recovery uh, sequence uh, you know this image so first image you can understand that it is actually a uh, periphery it is actually gray matter is hyper intense and white matter is dark so it is and uh, uh, CSF is da brighter so it is actually T1 
T2 weighted image and uh, this image you know it is actually white matter is white gray matter is gray so this is a T1 weighted image both the image you know some abnormality is there but correctly we cannot make code so but if you see this this is actually the flare image with the CSF suppressed CSF here was suppressed and now we are able to clearly make out some hyperentity densities within the periventricular region this is actually the Dawson's fingers in case of demyelination in case of multiple sclerosis so the some this periventricular lesions became conspicuous and very clear with actually the flyer image so it improves gray white differentiation delineation of edema uh, because edema uh, in T2 image will be more of hyperindense and will be different difficult to differentiate between a T2 hyperindensity with the edema. So it will be uh, so that hyperindensity will be cut off and in flare edema will stand out. Better visualization of uh, periventricular lesions as I had shown before. Now comes the diffusion weighted image. You know diffusion means random movement of water pro protons across the membranes and basically it deals with Brownian motion. So you know a glass of water if you keep you know it is static but uh, Brownian motion means it is actually undergoing random motion within itself. So this random motion is detected with case of diffusion weighted imaging and in case of infarction cytotoxic edema and other causes like demyelination what happens is that there is cell swelling and other because of other causes this motion is restricted this diffusion coefficient is reduced and this is picked up with case of in case of a diffusion weighted image this restricted diffusion is seen as a higher intensity but we shouldn't stop there we have to look at the adc apparent diffusion uh, coefficient value that is another image uh, which looks at multiple values so this is actually diffusion weighted image and some other image so what is this image you, now you can see the periphery the gray matter is gray and white matter is darker and see so this is is this t1 no this is not t1 just because of the reason that csf is blacker or cut off so this is a flyer image i was asked a question how do you differentiate diffusion weighted from flyer so we can easily make out because you know this is not T flare because of the reason that this doesn't have a outer skull or calvarium uh, out, outer box because diffusion weighted image just looks at the diffusion of water or diffusion coefficient or brownian motion and the bone or other tissues even the uh, outer tissues doesn't have uh, this kind of diffusion coefficient so that is why it is darker you can see that and uh, there is no diffusion restriction and you know water has got higher diffusion co uh, coefficient highest diffusion coefficient uh, it is rapidly moving as in CSF so it becomes more darker and uh, when there is restriction only it becomes bri it brightens off so whole of the brain is actually undergoing diffusion restriction but not as such in case where there is a pathology as in case of a infarction or in case of a malignant tumor where there is higher cellularity and there is diffusion restriction so if you say there is uh, this brain is a diffusion restriction there is no diffusion restriction that is wrong you should know that this brain parenchyma actually there is a diffusion restriction that is why it is being shown csf is having higher diffusion lot of diffusion that is why it is being not shown and uh, this, uh, this bone doesn't come into picture at all adc is a measure of diffusion and it has got mathematical values and it's actually kind of a uh, derived from t2 weighted image that is why uh, we have t2 shine through it refers to high signal on diffusion weighted image that is not due to restriction diffusion but rather due to due to t2 signal which shines through so we derive these images from t2 weighted images and t2 shine through occurs because there is some delay in the t2 we had re recently discussed that after the radio frequency was given the, there is t2 that the proton has to come back to the longitudinal position and uh, so it takes time to come back to the normal position due to some reasons basically maybe vasogenic edema and all that is why that occurs so that is why we, it's important so if you see here in the in this dw image there is actually a diffusion uh, hyper intensity here so if, is it true, true diffusion restriction we see the adc here there is actually 
uh, hyper intensity so this is actually a t2 shine through and not a true diffusion restriction so in dwi if there is a hyper intensity the more wideness but adc if there is loss of uh, value low adc then it could be due to uh, cytotoxicity as in case of stroke inflammation demyelination and t2 shine through both will be white that is t2 shine through and rarely uh, uh, this uh, not rarely this is actually you should know that if dw is dark as you know there is more of water here uh, so it just has got uh, diffusion high diffusion diffusivity so it will be darker and it will adc it will be because it is more water you know adc it will be t2 t2 you know t2 csf is white so it will just shine through in the background so csf is darker so i think that is a pretty clear thing then susceptibility weighted imaging sensitivity to compounds which are uh, distort the local magnetic field are detected like paramagnetic and diamagnetic substances so basically we are dealing with calcium and uh, bleed bleed contains uh, hemoglobin deoxyhemoglobin and ferritin or hemosiderin so uh, we detect bleed and calcification with the help of susceptibility weighted images so if you see here uh, this image what is this gray matter is much hyper intense and white matter is black so this is actually a t2 weighted image we learned and also you know uh, this water is white so it is t2 and t2 uh, there is hyper intensity in, in the uh, basal ganglia and then this is actually a ct because of the thick and uh, hyper hypo, hyper dense uh, skull and here is also hyper uh, hyper density in the uh, globus pallidus so and you can see that there is blooming or hypo density hypo intensity in the sw image so this is actually calcification and there is this actually blooming in case of uh, amyloidosis multiple blooming artifacts or hypertensive uh, bleed or amyloidosis get so that was regarding different sections in mri and sections can be axial coronal or sagittal uh, and uh, sections uh, so what is this section uh, how do you uh, tell this section as this is actually uh, so this is uh, uh, a section uh, where axial section sagittal section and a coronal section so this is the coronal uh, section mri so this is what you say this is a t2 weighted section because water csf is dark and this is an axial image so t2 axial image of the brain and this is actually a T1 sagittal section of the brain. So with this video, I hope that you had a better understanding of the MRI and its various sequences uh, which would be useful for your clinical practice and also could be useful for your in, uh, exams. So for more neurology content, uh, you could subscribe, like and uh, share this uh, video to others. And uh, I put this uh, video just because uh, in my Facebook group, uh, they had put, uh, the students had put some questions. You can join this Facebook group for daily questions which I am, uh, which I am putting and I am discussing uh, answers of this. Uh, so with that, I will hope that all had enjoyed this video. Uh,